So since this video, we're going to start analysis of the of the three dimensional functions. So uh, what we maybe should start with is just looking how those functions look like and uh, how they work. So look, first thing is I'm going to use this GeoGebra uh, 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 3D calculator. And look, of course, uh, I would prefer that you would do the same things on your own because it, if you want to really understand how 3D function work, 3D functions work, what you actually need to do is to try those things on your own and see and actually uh, see how things are happening. But let me just provide you with an introduction. Okay, look, here we have coordinate space, but in three dimensions. So we have three axes. Uh, let me first show you uh, axis X. Look, this is this green axis over here. If you put X equals to zero, it actually draws you uh, a, a plane created by this axis. Remember, we are now in three dimensions. And look, in a similar way, I can create Y equals zero. And this is going to show us where the Y axis is located and the plane that covers this axis. Yeah, and so as you can see, the blue axis here is the axis associated with variable z because we are going to now analyze a function z equals f of x and y. Okay, so look, let me uh, erase this one. Uh, and let's start with z equals to uh, z equals to zero. Okay, I need to erase some more. Okay, if we've got z equals to zero, we see that this is this plane. Look, this plane is created by x x axis going over here, the red one, and the green axis, uh, y axis going over here. So this you can think about it as a floor and each point uh, that we will observe as a function is located uh, is is located somewhere on the z-axis so look basically we will have a, always a pair of points like two and three on uh, uh, two on x-axis and three on y-axis and the height of this point is actually showing us the value of z. Look, if I'm going to change z from 0 to 1, look, what is going, what is happening? Look, now we see that we moved away by one unit. And uh, of course, this is a simple constant function. The higher we get, and uh, uh, the higher is the value of the constant, the further we get from the floor. But of course, if I'm going to put minus, I'm sorry, here, up, uh, up front the two. Now, of course, we are below the floor. It's, you know, like going to the basement in a building. And of course, this is not something very interesting. Interesting. Let's see something more challenging. For example, we have a function z equals to x. Look what is happening now. This is a counterpart of a linear function. But now, because we do not have y, it's, as you can see over here, is our x-axis. This function with the slope 2 over here is going through the origin and is increasing in a linear way. But look, now for any value of y, uh, we also have some location and look i could do the same thing if i would draw a function z equals 2 y it would 
be going through. Uh, it, it would be going through the red axis, so x axis, and we see actually that it creates another uh, uh, another uh, 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 surface. This surface, in this case, it's also a plane because it's uh, it's simply uh, uh, it's it simply uh, it created as a straight line. Okay. Again, this is not something very interesting, so I'm gonna uh, uh, let's go to something more complicated. Okay, we've got a function uh, z equals to x. So as x increases, z increases as well in a linear manner. Look now, what is going to happen if I'm gonna add here plus two y? Enter. Now. As you see, this uh, this surface has actually rotated, and now, as as z is increasing with higher x's and with higher y's, uh, we see that it, it is uh, it is now tilted and it goes uh, it gets higher the higher the x and of course the higher the y. Uh, and look of if I'm going to change the slopes on x and y, of course, they can be uh, 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 they can be any slopes we want. We're going to be changing the direction in which this surface is tilted. OK, we can ch check also more interesting case if I'm going to put minus in between those. Look, again, we are getting a linear function, but now it's rotating, rotating. Because look, why do we get this type of shape? Because look, with higher x's, value of the function are increasing. But with higher y's, values of the function are decreasing. Okay, let's, so let's try something more challenging. How does x squared would look like? Look, the, here we've got x-axis, here is y-axis, but we do not have uh, uh, we do not have y in our equation. So what do we see over here? Look, if I would get this in j a just right angle, it, it's a plane parabola, right? But now, you know, it's a surface because now we have points for all x's and all y's. And I could do the same thing with y. But there is more interesting point here. What if I would create a function x square plus y square? Look what, what has happened over here. What we've got over here is kind of kind of looking like a valley that we were discussing during the, uh, our discussions of derivatives. Look, it's of course empty inside because because this creates actually like a family of parabolas coming out of uh, of the origin. Uh, so from zero point and increasing indefinitely. And look, this point is going to be uh, this. This shape is going to be very interesting to us. Why? Because look, what you see over here is a local minimum. This point and actually, it's also an absolute minimum in this case because we have no lower point than x equals uh, x equals to zero, z equals to uh, x equals to y, a equals to z. They are all equal to zero. This is the lowest value z function can actually take over here. Uh, now, what would happen if I would introduce minuses in front of x's? x and y, I'm sorry. Now we would have upside down parabola. It would be now in the shape of a hill. Of course, look, I can easily move it higher, for example, by adding five. See, now the top is at five. And look, in our future videos, we're going to use partial derivatives, something we're going to introduce in the next video.
to actually locate this maximum and minimum of any three uh, or uh, uh, three or even more dimensional functions. But of course, I cannot show you four dimensional functions because we live in three dimensional world and our eyes can only see three dimensional objects. Now, now that we have all of this uh, and we are understanding it, let's see what can we do to, for example, move the location of, of this parabola? Look, nothing more easy over here. If I want to move it by one, uh, 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 by one uh, to the right on axis, I would simply Oh, I'm sorry, it's too far. No, now it's okay. Look, now what, what what has happened to this parabola? I just took took the uh, took the uh, maximum here point that was previously located at zero, and I moved it uh, here. Actually, uh, let me rotate this a little bit. I moved it from the origin and to point where x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. Okay, and look, I can do the same thing with, with y. For example, if I'm going to introduce parentheses over here, and uh, I'm going to, for example, add 2, what is going to happen? Look, now, I'm sorry. And uh, what is what, what has happened over here is that now I move the location of the tip of the parabola over here. Oh, of course, parabola is not the best word now that we are in three dimensions, but I hope you are more familiar with it. This is a spheric shape. This, what you see over here, is actually uh, uh, a, a part of a sphere. Okay, so now that we dealt with this, let's try something different. Uh, how about z equals to x times y? This has gotten a little bit more complex, as you can see over here. Look, what is happening right now? Look, here x's are getting bigger and y's are getting bigger. If x is getting bigger and y is getting bigger, when we multiply x by y, we are getting higher and higher values. So look, what we see over here is that when x is and y are getting higher both at the same time, we are getting bigger and bigger values. Now, if x is negative and y is negative we've got the same uh, we got the same outcome why because if both are negative minus and minus after multiplication gives you plus and this is why we're going up over here but look if now x is uh, if x is positive but y is negative we are getting negative number out of multiplication and we are going down over here and the same is true for the situation where y is positive and x is negative. You know, as a product, they're going to give us negative outcome. Okay, and look, so look how this works, uh, uh, how this works. Look, this, this point actually is very specific because look, if we look from this perspective, what we see is a minimum. But if we look from this perspective, what we see is a maximum. This type of point is called a settle point, and it's actually a counterpart of an inflection point that we've uh, been discussing in case of two-dimensional functions. Okay, and look, uh, as I told you, I just wanna provide you with a very, very brief introduction to, the, to this type of functions. But, of course, uh, the best way for you to learn 
everything over here is to try different functions. So before we uh, finish, let's try more options. How about if x is equal to ln, I'm sorry, not x, but z is equal to ln x. So here we've got logarithmic function, right? You see, it's only given for positive x's. And uh, because here we've got the same value for any value of y, it also creates banded surface. But what if I put here x times y? Interesting thing is happening. And, but it makes perfect sense. Look, we've gotten this, uh, it, this two, two planes, uh, it, 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 two planes. And look, because in this case, again, X and Y must be positive or X and Y must be negative because those values, uh, because we can calculate ln natural logarithm only of positive from positive uh, it, 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 from positive arguments. Okay, and what, let's try now something different. Here, what I'm going to show you is an example of Cobb-Douglas production function. This is the most common, commonly used function in economics used to, uh, I'm sorry, used to uh model the production process of a company okay look what do we see over here because here we have square roots right it means we can only take them from positive values so you see that from for negative values we've got nothing so both x and y are taken to the power of one over two so they both need to be positive and look, we see here that this uh, uh, around the uh, or around the middle of this plane, we got the highest values, right? And of course, uh, if we have big value of x but small value of y, we are still at uh, somewhere near our floor. Uh, okay, let's see what other interesting examples we can have. What about if I'm going to impose absolute value? I'm sorry. I'm not very familiar with this. I usually use the program that is available already on Mac, uh, which is called Grapher. If you have Mac, you can definitely try to use it because it's great. And but this one is for free. Look, what what have what has happened now? I've introduced absolute value on on both x and y, and now we can have the same production uh, function uh, for both positive and negative values. Okay, and finally, let's try for example. Oh no, maybe maybe before we finish, let's try exponential function e to the power of x times e to the power of y. Okay, how does this look like? Look, here, of course, the again, the higher is both x and y, the bigger is the value of the function, but we see this typical shape for exponential function that is increasing of course, faster and faster and faster. And look, the interesting thing, uh, of course, over here is that this function is given for any x and y, but of course, it's, their, its values can only be positive. Well, still, remember, we can always move any function in any direction we want. If we, I want to move it downwards, I would just, for example, subtract 6. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's not showed here, but you see, 
it's we still have the same shape now it's just simply lower okay and now look i can also move it on x and y simply by for example adding here one here subtracting three and you see the function has simply changed its location okay and now let's try sine function oh this one looks pretty right like a wave but uh, uh, again this is a simple sine function but we can make this more interesting for example now i can add to it sine y and look what what has happened over here now we have sine function on both on both x's and y's uh, it's, it, we, we combine them so look we get these waves over here but we get those the same waves uh, uh, from perspective of the other axis so from perspective of x axis and the perspective of y axis and with this as you see we can get uh, more uh, 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 more hills and more v actual valleys and look we can easily make this shape way more complicated for example by adding cosine x and subtracting uh, uh, cosine 2y and with that we can get any imaginable but still repetitive uh, a constellation of hills and valleys and look as before if I want to for example move it I would just impose uh, some uh, I would subtract or add some values from x's and y's but I can also move it up simply for example by adding one or maybe two so we can actually see that you see okay I think this is enough but what I really want to ask you to do is to practice on your own look at uh, me talking to you about three-dimensional functions and just showing them to you is not gonna to, not going to help you much but something that can actually help you really a lot is to uh, try different examples of different three-dimensional functions on your own and look at them really really look at them look at them from different perspectives see how they behave look it will expand your imagination and understanding not only of mathematics but generally of a lot of problems in which we need to take care into a lot of variables into consideration okay thank you for your attention and see you in the next video